Well, hello, everybody. I'm Rick Dancer. Welcome to Get Real with Rick Dancer. And I have had a super, super busy day. I was out um, gallivanting around in a place called Deer Lodge, Montana. Now, for those of you who don't know where Deer Lodge, Montana is, it's kind of in between Butte and Missoula, but closer to Butte, um, right off of I-90. And I'd never been there before, but a timber company I'm working with, this is Sun Mountain Timber, um, doing some stuff with them, took me on a tour because they're trying to explain to me some of the things that's going on um, with forests and management and lack thereof management and some projects that they're working on. And so uh, I did that today and I have a couple bites on here that I was looking at. But what I wanted to do tonight is back in the day when I first started this, it was probably, oh gosh, I bet eight years ago, I, I'm thinking. Um, and it was, it was much less um, formulated. It was much more of a just a program where people would comment and make comments to me and we'd have a conversation. And so I thought I would do that tonight. Your questions, what do you want to know? What's on your mind? And you can write them in the comment section. If you want to come on with me, um, you have to send me your email and I'll have to send you an invite. Uh, you got to have a microphone and a, um, a camera on your laptop and or your phone. And then I will bring you on here uh, live with me. Or you can just ask a question in the box. It's down there. Um, there's plenty going on in the world. What are you tired of? Um, what are you ready for? What, um, you know, um, what, what in your life is going well? What in your life is not going well? Um, you know, for me, I'm, I'm so tired of the political stuff. Hi, Steve Hawley. How are you? Um, that is driving me nuts. And, um, and yet there's a lot to pay attention to. And there's a lot of writing on this. Um, and and we have to be involved. So how do you stay involved and yet try to ignore it at the same time? <laughs> it is not easy. Um, you know, I don't know what you do, but I am, you know, I, I, I'm really listening to a lot less of the political stuff now and uh, trying to, I put on some music. I put on uh, Jordan Peterson. I, t I put on Joe Rogan listening to people like that talk to me and give me some um, words of wisdom um, rather than uh, all the turmoil going on in the world right now. I learned a ton today in the forest. Um, it was really interesting uh, seeing um, some of the hypocrisy in our culture as, um, you know, in, in terms of forest management and, and how they're trying to uh, create jobs and, and clean up the forest and make them less susceptible to fires. And uh, yet the, the litigation, um, the environmental community fighting them every step of the way. And it's got to be so frustrating. And uh, it was a super interesting. DC, DC James, the head coach, yo, Rick, <laughs> how you doing, man? So, yeah. So if you do want to come on, I'll put you on, but I got to have your email and just send it to me in the in the in the comment section. And I'll pop you up here and uh, and see what you got to say and what's going on in your world and your life and uh, what's happening with you. Um, I it was a two hour drive to get me to Deer Lodge, Montana. I don't know why that's so hard to say, but it sounds funny. Deer Lodge. I'm tired of narcissistic people in the world that are always a victim. <laughs> you know. Um, like who, Deanna? <laughs> Not you. Don't give me names of family members, please. Um, I get accused of that all the time. People going, "You're narcissistic because you're talking about yourself." Well, it's kind of my show, and I'm kind of talking about how I see the world in hopes that that would make other people talk about how they see the world. And uh, um, but yeah, there's it, it is funny how and, and narcissists only see narcissism in other people. They never see it in themselves. <laughs> it, it's like. I, I'm personally tired of the um, the people who come on and try to pretend like they're listening um, and they're really not. They just want to use it. They have an agenda to push and they're pushing it. Tina was here today and she finally turned against Brown in her ads. Well, how where was she, Charles? That's kind of funny. Um, and... Uh, yeah, yeah, she's got to do something. What do you guys think is going to happen in all that? Um, what's up with the crab issue 
up in the Pacific Northwest. Um, I don't even know about that, DC James. Somebody else is going to have to come on here and explain that to us. Um, somebody asked a weird question online today. I thought, well, not weird. I just thought it was interesting. They said, what's the scariest thing you've ever seen? And, um, and somebody came on and, well, thanks, Elizabeth. Somebody came on and I think it was that they were somebody that involved with the Derry Martin murders. I don't know if you guys remember that in 1994, April of 1994. And I think that's what she was talking about. But I thought that was an interesting question. The scariest thing you've ever seen. I don't know what the scariest thing I've ever seen is. I really have no, um, no idea whatsoever. Um, what that is. I can, I, I think that, uh, the, um, the worst thing I've ever seen was I remember, um, when I was a reporter in Coos Bay, um, there was a plane crash and two people, um, two Catholic priests were in this plane and it crashed into a, a mountainside. And, um, I drove my car out there and I got there right after search and rescue, but the coroner wasn't there yet. And so the search and rescue guy kind of said, oh, just come down here. You can get some shots. And I go down there and I said, where are the, where are the people? And he goes, see those things that look like roast beef. And I looked in there and I went, oh, they had just been burned. They were just like charred figures. I couldn't get it out of my mind and I had to go home and take a shower. I just felt so horrible. Um, oh, here we go. I've got Steve Holly on here. What happened to the good old debate days? It's just mud throwing now, at least with the debate, you could get the re, a read on them and the mud slinging crap. Yeah, that's, I think though, Steve, don't you think the debate has been gone for, even, I mean, decades? When I ran, there wasn't a debate. It was also controlled. It was ridiculous. So I, I think it's been, I bet it's been 30 years um, since you've seen a real debate um, in my one. Christy Ricker. <laughs> Uh, how did I, Christy, if I was Rick Ricker, that would be weird, wouldn't it? Today, the love of money means more than lives. It is okay. Biggest problems. What do you think the biggest problems in culture are? I think it's selfishness. It's it's the love of money. Um, it is. Um, it, it's it's. I think those are the two biggest problems I see in the in in America. This is DeAndre Pastor D C James in my new brand bro <laughs> how are you doing deandre that's good to hear from you man again if any of you guys want to join me live on here i've got a i can send you something i'm wondering the same about the about the crab fishy why yeah i didn't hear that i heard nothing about the crab fishery so if some of you know anything about it um i would love to hear it um greed and hate and and he, i have never experienced more hate than I have since COVID. Um, no, you know, you know what it is? It's since Trump. Um, and I'm not blaming Trump. I think that's a real cop out for people that blame Trump. That's just horseshit. If you hate, it's because you hate. They say, oh, he made it okay to hate. Now, it, people have hated long before Donald Trump. He's not God. <laughs> people have hated long before Donald Trump. I think what he did was he gave a bunch of people a voice who were feeling voiceless and they came out, they just came out screaming. Um, and it was crazy. Um, Charles, you say power. I agree. Power is a huge, um, elixir. How's that for a word? Um, Anna Parker, I'm tired of the mudslinging e um, mailings. Oh, see, I don't go well out cause I'm not in Oregon. So I don't get any of them. I'm sorry. That's what I got. That. Yeah, that would be horrible. Okay. Elizabeth says money is the root of all evil. Um, Elizabeth, please let me know what the crab situation is. Rick, sure love watching your videos. Oh, thank you. Um, Tom Hunt, Obama had a hatred towards cops. Um, I don't think it's all. Yeah, I mean, hate is a big problem, but I think it's also bullying. I was talking to these guys today when I was out on a, a, on a touring. Um, and it was it was super interesting. Um, hold on. OK, so. Yeah, I hate it's not a good thing. Um, yeah, hate is not a good thing. Well, what I find funny is the very people who hate, a lot of them are the ones telling me not to hate. <laughs> I always like people that come on and they yell at you um, in a very f nice fashion. And then they then they tell you that they, 
they follow the kindness rules that they're kind to people. And I'm going, you might want to check that bumper sticker at the door. <laughs> Anthony, how you doing, buddy? What's your opinion on 114? I think 114 is a piece of shit legislation that's going to do no good. It's a it's a ruse. It's a bunch of bullshit. It's not going to it's going to end up in the courts forever. Um, and it's not going to do anything to solve the problem of gun violence. And or not, it's not even gun violence. It's people violence. That's another thing I am so tired of. Guns are an, just a tool. They're not they're not that it, that person. The problem is people are fucked up. And, and the problem is you lock people down for two years and then you expect there not to be mental health issues. I heard another report today on education in America, and they said that our math skills, our children's math skills or grandchildren um, are in the toilet because of the lockdowns. So did anybody ever think about the bigger picture before we went and just made everybody afraid and locked down? And I know there's still some of you out there who feel like the lockdown was a good thing. I 100% disagree. Um, I want and I think it, it, I think we're already seeing the results of that. And in 10 years or 20 years, you're going to be embarrassed. Alaska banned all crabbing this season. What Luann, is that the story? So for Alaska, why? Oh, probably some environmental reason, I'm sure. Um, Tom says no on 14 won't work and will only have legal challenges. And the other thing, Tom, about 114.2 is it's it's not even designed to work. It's gonna it's just a cluster screw. And 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 that once again, you punish the law abiding citizen and make it more difficult. So so here's the thing with 114, as I understand it, and anyone can 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 um, correct me if you want. But I had people on the show who were with the, the organization and they said the problem with it is that 114, it requires that the sheriff's department provide classes for people um, to, and, and using a gun before you can ever even apply to get the permit. Well, they don't have those classes now. They can't even get permits done the way it is now. I, I was I mean, in Oregon. I took have a concealed uh, or carrying permit. It was, um, God, it was nine months. Montana, you just get it. They don't have to have it. Um, but so nine months, so let's say it takes them nine months to get a program together, if that. So all those people who want to buy a gun, you can't buy a gun for nine months until the program's up because the program has to be up and running because you have to take the class before you get the permit. So sounds kind of convenient if you're an anti-gun person, doesn't it? <laughs> Allowing minor possession of drugs only aids to homeless challenges. Tom, you are 100% right. Um, when Oregon passed measure 110, we made, uh, I don't, I didn't vote for it, but Oregonians made a huge mistake because we were sold a bill of goods that it was going to do some good. But the report came out a year after it was done. I heard it on Bill London's report and it didn't work. And now Tina Kotek, a uh, candidate for governor, um, says we just need to give it more time. No, you need to cut bait. You need to understand you screwed up. And now you've invited every transient drug user from all over the country to Eugene and Portland and Medford and every other city in Oregon uh, because they're not going to get busted if they have heroin or cocaine or amounts of, you know, that kind of drug, the hard drugs. Um, one of the biggest questions I get in Montana is, did Oregon really legalize that stuff? Yeah. And, and, and the idea was that, you know, you pay a fine or you go take a class. Well, nobody's taking the class. <laughs> Plus, how do you make somebody who's a transient um, pay a fine? It's never worked before. And so Oregon needs to, and I know Betsy Johnson and uh, uh, Drazen, Christine and Drazen have both said they're going to put that before the voters to, to repeal it again. And that's the best thing that could be done because the homeless situation in Oregon is out of control. It's ridiculous. My son was stabbed, almost died, was in surgery for 15 hours. A knife, he was almost killed by a knife. Guns aren't the problem. Yeah, it's, it's, it's people are crazy. And why are they crazy? Because you lock them up for two years and you, and you expect them to come back normal. Environmental. Oh, environmental reason. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. That's crazy. Very inconvenient. Incon uh, yeah, for the gun classes. There is no funding for the agency. To, that's the other thing. Tom's right. There's no funding to provide the classes, which you have to think, okay, so if these 
anti-gun people come up with this legislation and it looks like we're trying to solve this problem. No, you're trying to stop people from having guns. Um, and I'll tell you one thing, come to Montana and try that. <laughs> Not gonna happen. Not gonna happen. 110 needs to be, it needs to be repealed and shoved up the people who figured it out up their backside. Um, okay, hold on. You guys are really in a mood to do this tonight. Oregon has been steadily going down the hole educationally. We went from the top 10% to the bottom. This is why I'm voting for Drazen. I, it, it has, it's our education system sucks. And, and part of the, and what's interesting is most of the money, a lot of the money in, um, in campaigns in Oregon, do you know where it comes from? It comes from the Oregon Education Association. Oh, that's the union that, that controls all the teachers. So if they're putting so much money into this, why wouldn't our education system be better? I have two words for you, school choice. And both Betsy Johnson and Christina Drazen are open to school choice. We need to do what Arizona did and your tax dollars follow your kid where you want them to go and get them out of the public schools and get them into something that is going to fit your thoughts. So I think they screwed up with CRT and the, the new transgender stuff that they're pushing in the schools and the Kotex machines and our tampon machines in the boys' bathroom. <laughs> I mean, all that parents are rejecting it like crazy. And, and you need to, you need to call your school board. You need to go to your meetings and stand up for yourself. Fentanyl is rampant in Douglas County. Debbie, I just had a parent um, call me and said that their kid had, um, they can't find him and they're, on, they're using fentanyl. It just breaks my heart. Um, it's not just, I mean, yeah, Douglas County is terrible, but it's everywhere. And, and what do they do about that? Huh? Yeah. Why are we coming up with legislation called 114 to stop guns? Um, when we have a drug problem, why don't we spend our money trying to help people and save their lives? It's absolutely ridiculous. Um, okay, Tom, what are crimes and habits? Oregon legislature has tied the hands of law enforcement too. Well, we need to go untie it. Guns don't kill, people do. Exactly, DC. Um, yeah, <laughs> they, they try to blame an inanimate object. Um, you know, so, so, um, when you get in a car wreck, um, is the person driving the car, let's say a drunk driver hits your, your, your daughter's car and kills her. So is the car the problem? <laughs> no, it's the drunk driver. So if a person shoots your son and kills him, is it that that darn gun? What, what else do we blame on an inanimate object? We don't blame other accidents on inanimate objects. So that's the most stupid thing. Use that. Think about I'd love to have somebody who supports um, that. Answer the question for me. So if you support tougher gun laws, then, then tell me this. What, what happens when, um, when a driver hits another person in a car. Is it the car's fault or is it the person driving the car's fault? It's the same thing. Oh, so stupid. What's up, Rick? It's very important for Oregon to vote this year. Oh, it is so important for Oregonians to vote this year. You could actually change your state. Now, it's not going to do. The problem is um, if this is my rationale, if Christine wins, that's great. Um, you got a Republican for the first time in decades, more than decades. Um, but the problem is she's, she's still going to have a legislature more than likely. I don't see, this is just me, but, and I could be wrong and I hope I am. I don't see a big red tide in Oregon legislature. Um, the balance of the house is out. This has been going on too long. The cheating, the redistricting cheating, um, the switching lines to benefit, you know, people. So, it, it, so that's not going to change probably this election. So it's going to be hard for Christine to really get something passed through. But you have somebody at the top who at least is a wonderful. She's got a brain. She's per, she, she has the right values. Um, my personal thing with Betsy, that's why I like Betsy, is because I think she can bridge the gap between the two. And maybe Christine can, too. I think either one of them will make a wonderful governor. And if that happens, I'm going to be screaming from Montana. Yeah. If Christine Drazen wins, you guys are in serious trouble. Serious trouble. Why did you give up on politics aspirations with the way things have progressed? 
to get your voice out, it seems your knowledge and ability has only grown. Will you consider public office in Montana? You know what, Corey? I might. I think, um, I mean, I had a lot of people ask me that, like when you left, when you just did only, only ran once, why didn't you run again? You know, I, because the system is so fucked up. I mean, honestly, it's so fucked up in Oregon. I mean, there's so much cheating going on and the, the, the redistricting is a huge problem. And, and the more I saw my voice being ignored, the more I realized this is not going to work. And then with COVID, that was the bottom. That was a, that was a clencher for Kathy and me. Um, that put us over the edge. Do not tell me what to do. I'm a citizen of the United States of America, and you do not tell me what to do. And the more they push this stupid stuff, which now we're beginning to see that it was wrong, that they were wrong. They won't admit it, but they were wrong and it was stupid. And you caused more damage by your lockdowns than um, to, to all people. Um, and then that's my opinion. And so we wanted to move to Montana anyway. And here I am free. And I'm sorry if people, you know, if people get, oh, why are you talking about Montana? Well, this is where I live. And you're asking questions. So um, I am free to talk about stuff like that. But this guy asked me today, would you ever consider that? And I said, yeah, in a state like this, I would. Um, but who knows? I, my wife doesn't want me to, I'm sure. Uh, so that may never happen. But you know what? I can still come here and be involved. And in a place where my voice matters, where it's actually heard, where um, I don't have to sit in a conversation and hedge because I know that the person across the table from me is so intolerant that if I tell them what I really believe about all this, like I do now, um, if I did any of that, I'll get the hate that, that my friendships would be over. And you know what? COVID showed me how a lot of my friendships were very surface because those people left me. They dumped me. Um, they got rid of my page. All of a sudden I was a hater and I was killing people and all that stuff. Well, then you're not my friend. If you really, if you, if you know my heart, then you know, how can you call me a hater and a, and a, and a killer? You don't. So that means it was a surface relationship. You just liked Rick Dancer. You didn't like me. You don't give a shit about me. All you care about is being right. And that your ideology prevails because after all the rest of us who have different ideas about ideology we're just stupid and we don't have to be listened to that's what's got to change in oregon oh diana i don't know measure 112 i'm sorry i'm not because i'm not there i only know of the ones that people are calling me about and talking to me about so i don't know um about 112 maybe somebody else on here does um shelly People need to be held accountable. We need to be holding people accountable. That's what we need to do. Um, they're not going to hold themselves accountable. I mean, come on, whatever they can get away with, they're going to get away with. Um, and, you know, so we as a culture have to say and quit playing their game. You know, I'm not going to play your game. I'm not going to use your pronouns. That's if you want to have pronouns, that's fine. But I'm a grammar person. So you can't be. A they, if you're a person, a one person, a they is two people or more. It's a group. You can be an it, but you don't want to be called an it because then that sounds bad. And I wouldn't want to call anybody an it, but you have to, you can't be called a they. It's grammatically incorrect. And so I can't do that. And I'm sorry because my ideology says that words matter and truth matters. So you can have your personal pronouns and that's great, but I'm not going to call you what just necessarily what you want to be called um, because I can't, I can't go against my value too. And values to me are correct grammar and I screw my grammar up too, but I correct it when I need to. Um, what's this? It's the needle of pipes fault. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, I overdosed. It was the needles fault. <laughs> I got really too stoned and I was just really out of my mind. It was the bong. <laughs> God. But but they get away with it because we let them. We can't solve homelessness until we provide mental health care and substance abuse treatment. Exactly. And the homeless problem in Oregon is not a really homelessness problem. What it is is you've attracted all these transients and people from other places who are coming here or coming there 
Um, and they're not, that, it's not Eugene's homeless problem. You've made it your problem because the city council won't bother to go out and figure out what the fuck is going on out there. Um, so they won't do anything about it. But you go ask those people, I've done it, I've interviewed them. And then they'll tell you, they come here because there's drugs, there's free healthcare, they get all the food they want. I'm, I mean, they're fine. Those people now are truly homeless people who are folks who are suffering because they don't have a job and other things going on and some mental illness too. Those are the people we need to be taking care of, but we're attracting, you are attracting people from all over the country because you don't have the guts to stand up and say, no, you're ruining our town. And then people, well, if I say that, which I've already had this happen to me, then people come on and go, you don't care. Oh, horseshit, I do too care. I care probably more than you do. I think it's a disgrace that you allow people to sit on the streets of Eugene, Oregon and Springfield, Oregon and suffer in drug addiction. Yeah, I think that is a disgrace. It's a disgrace to be a, what is that, an, an enabler. You're, you're, the community is, a, the, the city council is an enabling city council. Not all of them, Mike Clark's not. Uh, but it's enabling this bad behavior and sad behavior, my opinion. Nothing. We're nearing a shortage of Narcon. Someone suggested you carrying a dose to help someone in crisis. Uh, yeah, I don't know. If the government was playing Monopoly, they would be the first to be out. Yeah, they just bought the railroad and went bankrupt. Narcon needs to be in every business. I don't, I don't know. I mean, or, or maybe we just do the media, do the tough things to do and, and, and don't put up with it any longer. We blame drugs for the action of the users. How are guns different? Um, exactly, Cindy. I would agree with you. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, but, but if somebody's on drugs, they're more likely to do the bad things. That's what we've, we're finding, right? Um, so yeah, there are people making bad choices. So maybe, yeah, maybe Cindy's right. Maybe we need to start putting the blame on not the drugs, but that these are just people that are um, doing bad stuff. They will blame it on SUV if that is what the driver was driving. Okay, Rob, there, I don't really agree. Loaded question. Do you miss Oregon? Um, I miss you. I'll tell you what I miss. I miss familiar. Um, I miss my friends. Um, I miss the old Oregon. I don't miss the politics. I, I don't miss being in a place that, um, I've, you know, I've already been out to coffee with people and I can talk to Democrats and Republicans and we can express exactly what we're thinking. And we all kind of go, oh, well, here's where we could agree. That didn't happen in, in Oregon anymore. Um, there's just line. And I'll tell you what, there's actually just a, a, an oppression that I feel when I'm in Oregon that, and, and a sadness on people's faces. I notice people don't smile as much as I used to think they did. Um, because I think it was that, you know, the after effects of COVID was so harsh. And um, so, yeah, I guess, Anthony, I miss people like you who are friends. And I miss P, um, and I, you know, and I, I, I have a place, my family has a place at the coast. So I'll get to go to the coast because the coast is probably what I miss the most because we have mountains that make Oregon's look like hills. <laughs> so, so I really like our mountains here and stuff. Um, and it's, you know, I'm, I'm learning to meet people. And um, I'm not really that shy about stuff. So there's things like that I, I, uh, I miss, but I'll always miss. I always have a big heart for Oregon. I, I what, you know what I hate is when people come on and say, you don't even live here anymore. You can't stick up for Oregon. It's like, fuck you. I can too. I mean, I, I was born there. I can always, I will always love Oregon, but it doesn't mean like a bad relationship. It doesn't mean I'm going to stay in it. Um, if, if, if I can, I can love something and know that I need to leave it because of staying in it is going to take me down even further. And it was getting to the point for my wife and me, we were just like unhappy. We were not, we, we didn't feel like this was the place we were supposed to be. And for those of you who feel like that's still the place to be, that doesn't mean it's wrong. I mean, we all have different callings. God puts us in different places. And maybe he had to get us to the point where that's what we saw so that we would leave and come do what we were going to do. So good question, Anthony. I voted for you. Lynn, I, I guess I want to thank you uh, for trusting me. <laughs> I'm glad that more people voted against me. <laughs> so I didn't get that job. I would have been killed. 
people that don't have guns think that everyone should not get guns. But I think about it and there are 10 houses on our block and nine of them all have guns in them. I don't think it's anybody's business who has guns and who doesn't have guns. You'll sure be happy when I have a gun, when the guy comes breaking into your house and I'm the guy that walks in and shoots him and saves your life. You'll sure, you'll sure like my neighborly guns. You mean if Tina wins, we're in major trouble? Oh, yeah, you think? <laughs> you are, yeah. Word again. Um, woo, go for it, Rick. Oh, oh sorry. I'm, I kind of passed through some of the air. There's a lot of comments on here. Okay, hold on. Here we go. I can't support Betsy because she supports abortion up till birth. That is too extreme. I don't know that she does up till birth. And maybe you're right. Um, I don't, um, I've never talked to her about that because um, that is an issue for me that in Oregon probably is never going to change. Um, I don't think you're ever going to be a pro-life state. Um, so it doesn't matter whether the governor to me supports it or not. Um, it's what are you going to do about homelessness? What are you going to do about the, the things that, because, because Oregon, the, 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 the Supreme Court decision doesn't change anything in Oregon. It may, it means the state's going to decide. And I think that Oregon's going to, people are making a bigger deal about that. And you know why? Cause that's the only thing the Democrats have um, kind of sad. The only issue they have, they can't do it in the economy they can't do inflation, uh, gas prices, um, cost of living, uh, my 401k, they got nothing to run on. So the only thing they have is abortion. And um, and is abortion important, an important issue? Yes. But when you poll people in America, it comes down like 8% of the people care about that issue in a big way. So why are the why are the Democrats pushing and pushing and pushing? Because it's the only, they're hoping young voters will go, oh yeah, they can't, they're going to try and stop my right. That's not going to happen. Not for a long time. And that's, but that's all they got because they're desperate. Yes, Montana. Oh, May, how you doing, May? Same has happened to us in the media world and with friends. Oh, yeah, I've lost um, dear friends. And um, and media people like that I used to work with and stuff, they, they think I'm off the deep end and stuff. But, you know, here's the deal. I don't care. I mean, I know I'm secure with what I believe. And, um, and I'm not going to – that doesn't mean they're – I think they're wrong. They think I'm wrong. I could still sit down and chat with them. But for some reason, um, because I might support things that they don't or not support things that they do, all of a sudden I'm the enemy. I don't live my life that way. It's too short. I only get like, what, 115 years on this planet. Haters are indicator. Haters are indicator that you're onto something. I totally agree. The more people that start disliking you, um, then you know you hit a nerve. And because people, if, if you're, if you don't, if you just say something and it doesn't challenge them, um, what, what are you, who cares? Hi, Roll, rain, rain that we need so bad. Hope it puts out some fires. I do too, Sharon. I, I, I hope you guys get that fire under control. I haven't talked to my sister in a year. She said she hoped we both get COVID and die because we are non vaxxers. Um, Debbie, I have had people say on my page, um, that they hope that my family and I get COVID and die too. Yeah. Um, and those are the same people that choose kindness. <laughs> uh, life is too short to be sorry. Yep. I agree. I agree. Fuck that. You know, I miss you too. We sure miss you and Kathy. Well, I appreciate that. My friend, um, I miss you guys too. Um, but you know, um, I, I just think there's something about, I, here's the deal. I know that we're supposed to be right here. And it's so weird because um, nothing, there's no real reason for that to be like that. But all the, and it's not, and my, our life is a perfect here. Um, you know, it's not perfect. We love it here. Um, but there's things that, you know, you, you miss about, and we talked a little bit about that. Um, but we just know, we just know this is where we're supposed to be. And, um, and there's a lot of peace in that, you know, and, um, what happens and will this be our, you know, I, 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 I don't have a forever home ever. 
until I'm done with this life. And even then, I don't know what God's going to do with me. I mean, what, I don't know what you do. I don't, I, I don't play the harp and, and I'm not real good with religious people. So I hope he has a little spot kind of off to the side of heaven that I can spend some time in because I'm not sure I'm going to really want to hang around uh, some of that crap. <laughs> um, I will stick up for Oregon always. Um, that's my whole thing. For what it counts, I don't feel you ran. I feel you guys needed to do what makes you happy. Exactly. We didn't run. I didn't run from anything. I ran to something. Huge difference. When you're a victim of gun violence, you change you change your time quickly. Or your mind, you mean mine. I don't think I went about gun about my about guns, Laura. Um, I I um, it, it's not the gun. I will never change my feelings about mental health in Oregon and people that are crazy and governments that drive people crazy. But um, if it's not a gun, um, they'll find something to do. And, um, and that's just me, but I, I get what you're saying. What's up family. All the gold hunters here got fired, got hired in four days. Chin up friends. Don't let the Dems drag you down. <laughs> uh, Oh, it's this praying for the 114 to fail. I, um, yeah, did you hear what um, what Phil Knight, like one of the things that put him over the edge was something in the New York Times that said something about in Oregon, there was a picture of like a bunch of cocaine and a straw. And, and it said you know, the only thing illegal in this picture was the straw in Oregon. That's so stupid. You'll have to ask for a straw in Oregon to save the turtles. Give me a freaking break. Came from out, out of state primary to run for office. A lot of the people are afraid of guns, yet they will get behind the wheel of an SUV and not fear it. Unfortunately, people aren't very logical, you think? Not very logical and not very critical thinking. Um, hey, Rick. Um, we moved countries and still love our homeland. Oregon is your home state. You will always care about it. Yeah, that's the whole, that's the truth. God, you guys are just really, maybe I should do this more often. Um, I get that, Lord. I'm going to be very compassionate about that. I never cared who had guns until we became victims. I, I get that. I mean, I don't understand it from your point of view. What am I trying to say? I can't empathize with you, but I can sympathize with you. Um, empathy. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense to you. Um, a friend literally was on a hike today and almost got attacked by a man who came out of the woods. She pulled her pistol out of her pack and he ran off. Sorry, guns do have a place. Wow. More of that's coming up in Oregon too. Did anyone talk about the 11 year old at the pub in Eugene? Large protest. Yeah, but you know, it's interesting to me and what I read online, and I don't know if this is true, um, online, it said there was 50 people protesting against it and like 300 showed up to protest for it. <laughs> I'm not laughing, but I, I'm laughing because that's just so freaking weird. You, you show up to support that. Um, I don't know. Oh, Lori, you're welcome. Always. Uh, well, you guys, God, that was fun. I'm going to have to start doing more of these. You like this? I mean, is this like stuff you like doing, just kind of having a conversation and and doing our thing. Um, I really enjoyed that. And our sponsor tonight is Chris Daniel Family Dentistry, where everybody matters. And uh, it doesn't matter if you've had vaccinations or not. Um, Dr. Bratlin will take care of you and make sure that you're taken well care of. Um, okay, I heard about it. Corey says, Time for self promo. What other platforms can we keep? I follow you here, but sometimes the timing does not work. Watching later would be, be great, also. Um, you can catch me on Facebook. It's also on rickdancer.com um, on my website. It goes live. And then when it's not live, it's on YouTube. So my YouTube station is Rick Dancer or Go Go Rick Dancer or Go Go Dancer. Go Go Rick Dancer. Yeah. Um, and you can find it on there. It's always on there um, live and afterwards, too. Um, Love the conversation. I do too. Well, you know what? And you guys, you should also, um, if you love conversation, you should check out May and Tim. They're one of our sponsors here and they do a program 
um, over on that. Well, any, any um, called BS free MD, they're doctors. They give you no bullshit. They give you medical information and it's over on Spotify, Amazon. I mean, any, anybody that has a podcast, it's on there and it's just kind of BS free MD. And they have a new episode every Thursday and they will challenge you and they entertain you because they're fun too. So they're another sponsor of our show and we might as well give them a shout out since May's on here. So, um, <laughs> I, lo I love this guy. Um, people communicating is what you do, man. It is what I do. Um, guy today asked me, what do you do what you do? And I said, because I believe everybody has a voice and whether I agree with it or not, you should be able to use it, but don't shut me up. Don't ever try to, to quiet or silence me. Um, because, um, I become, you know, what my name means and, and what Richard means means lion hearted and you try to quiet me and you will find a lion inside that you will not want to deal with um, at all. So to those who disagree, come on and have a chat about it. Um, if you go home and pout and put your, and then write bad things about me in other pages, screw you. Um, if you can't face it and face us, um, then um, what you say means nothing to me. If you have a good argument and you want to make it, I'm fine with that. But don't bring your, your, um, your, uh, highbrow to my table because your intellect is no match for truth all right have a great evening tomorrow night we have this great conversation on this guy out of roseburg um uh, matt hill did these awesome videos on the fires that Archie Creek and there are different aspects of it. And then what we're doing is we're going to play that video. And then we have a, a studio, a, a, a panel, a couple people who will come on and we're going to talk about those issues about forest related issues and stuff. It's super fun and you really, really like it. And then on Wednesday, I think um, bait and tackle Rob's going to come on and we're going to have a conversation with you guys. And then on Thursday we have Kim Stark here. She'll have a surprise for us. Uh, Bill London will be here with news and uh, Compton Family Vineyards will be here. And um, also um, Tim and May um, will tease us on Thursday with what's coming ahead for the rest of the week on BS Free MD. All right, you guys have a great evening or time because this airs whenever anybody's on there. And uh, share it on your page too because sometimes Facebook like tries to throttle me back because they don't like these conversations. It makes their, they get their undies all bunched up and it gets caught in their butthole and they get really cranky. So I need you guys to push that thing forward. I know that was probably too much, but you know me. Bunchy undies, Facebook buttholes. <laughs> <laughs>